The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 4, language. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to use structurally sound sentences in a meaningful and functional manner. Learners should be able to use simple sentences appropriately and correctly and construct acceptable compound and complex sentences by using clauses, phrases and conjunctions. I'm Nicola Shongwe. Welcome to our final lesson on sentences. In the previous lesson, we learned that there are different types of sentences based on the number of main clauses that they contain. We also learned that some sentences contain main clauses and subordinate clauses. In this lesson, we're going to focus on what a subordinate clause is and how you can add them to your sentences. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify adverbial and adjectival clauses and state the uses of these subordinate clauses. Subordinate clauses add detail to writing. They tell the reader more about the main clause and answer the questions why, where, when and how the events of the main clause occurred. So let's begin this lesson on subordinate clauses with a definition. A subordinate clause is the clause that tells us more about the main clause. It performs the function of an adjective or adverb. We touched on subordinate clauses in our last lesson, but now we're going to look at them in more detail. There are two types of subordinate clause. An adjectival clause, which does the work of an adjective, that is, it tells us more about the noun. And an adverbial clause, which does the work of an adverb. In other words, it tells us more about the verb. Let's begin by discussing adjectival clauses. These are quite easy to spot, as they are often introduced by relative pronouns. Relative pronouns are who, whom, whose, that and which. Let me show you how relative pronouns are used to introduce additional information in the form of a subordinate clause. My father, who is now retired, used to run his own business. In this sentence, the subordinate clause is who is now retired. It tells us more about the noun, my father. It is introduced by the word who, which links my father to the rest of the subordinate clause. Here, the subordinate clause is placed between commas or brackets. It could be left out completely and the sentence would still make sense and it would read, my father used to run his own business. Here's another example. See if you can spot the relative pronoun and the subordinate clause. The twin towers which used to grace the New York skyline crumbled into dust. Now where's the subordinate clause in this sentence? Well, here it is, in between the two commas. And so it reads, which used to grace the New York skyline. What is this subordinate clause telling us more about? And is there a relative pronoun? Yes, there is a relative pronoun, and here it is, which. So the subordinate clause, which used to grace the New York skyline, is telling us more about the Twin Towers. This is a noun, so the subordinate clause is an adjectival clause because we're given some additional information about the noun. Now you already know that adjectives describe nouns 
and you've just learned that adjectival clauses describe or tell us more about the noun in the main clause. So they're performing the same function. However, the placement often differs. Let's have a look at these two sentences. The beautiful girl is my friend. And that girl who is beautiful is my friend. In the first sentence, beautiful is the adjective. And in the second sentence, the adjective has been replaced with an adjectival clause, who is beautiful. Notice that it's in a different position relative to girl, but the meaning of the two sentences is the same. Okay, so far we've seen that the adjectival clause describes the noun in the main clause. But what describes the verb in the main clause? Well, for that, we need to move on and look at the next type of subordinate clause. Adverbial clauses. These do the work of an adverb, and they tell us more about the verb in the main clause. There are eight different types of adverbial clause. Now, I suggest that you write them down as we go through them so that you'll have a list that you can refer to in the future. Follow me now and write down these three different headings. Adverbial clause of, and we'll look at different types of adverbial clause. The next heading is answers the question because adverbial clauses answer particular questions. And lastly, adverbial connector, which is the word by which adverbial clauses may be introduced. Now, the first type of adverbial clause that we're going to look at is known as an adverbial clause of time. This tells us when the main clause took place and it can be introduced by the words when, whenever, before, or after. Here's a sentence in which an adverbial clause of time has been used. I'll go to school after I've finished my breakfast. Where's the main clause? It's at the beginning. I'll go to school. The rest of the sentence is the subordinate clause that tells us when I'll go to school. This is an adverbial clause of time. Remember, it's introduced by the words when, whenever, before or after. Now let's move on and look at the next type of adverbial clause, which is the adverbial clause of place. The adverbial clause of place tells us where the main clause took place, and it could be introduced by the words where or wherever. Here's a sentence where the adverbial clause tells us more about where the main clause will occur. I go to the school where my brothers went. The main clause is, I go to the school. Can you spot the adverbial clause? It's right here. See how it's introduced by the connector where. The next type of adverbial subordinate clause is that of manner. Manner refers to the way in which something is done. Let's fill it in on our chart. It answers the question, how? And it's introduced by the words, like, as, or as if. Here's a sentence in which the manner of the verb is described. I go to school as if I am sleepwalking. Do you see the words as if? That indicates that a comparison is going to follow to describe the way in which I go to school. So 
as if I am sleepwalking is the adjectival clause of manner. By now, you should see a pattern that the adverbial clause tells us how, when, or where the verb happens. Let's look at the next type of adverbial clause, which tells us why the verb occurs. It's known as the adverbial clause of reason, and it tells us why the verb occurs. It can be introduced by the words since, because, or as. An example of a sentence containing an adverbial clause of reason is I go to school because I want to get an education. In this case, the subordinate clause is introduced by because and then a reason for the main clause is provided. I want to get an education. A very similar type of adverbial clause is the adverbial clause of purpose. So it's an adverbial clause of purpose and it answers the question for, for what? Purpose as opposed to the clause of reason which answers the question why? Adverbial clauses of purpose are often introduced by the words so that or in order that. Here's a sentence that uses an adverbial clause of purpose. I go to school so that I will pass. Here, the purpose of me going to school is so that I will pass. I hope you're filling in your own table as we go along. Don't give up. These might seem tricky, but they're actually quite easy. Just read the sentence and then ask what is giving extra information about the verb. The next type of subordinate adverbial clause we need to look at is that of result. This gives us the outcome of the verb and it's often introduced by the words so that. Another way of thinking about these adverbial clauses is that they state what the consequences of the verb were, as in this example. I like school so much that I don't mind staying late. In this example, the result of liking school is given. Note the word that. It's often a clue that a subordinate clause of result is being given. Well, we're down to our last two adverbial clauses now. The next one we're going to look at is the adverbial clause of concession. And if you don't know what concession means, think about soccer. The team conceded a goal. It means they lost or gave away the goal. Concession. And it answers the question, what was conceded or admitted and it's introduced by the words although or even though. Now in an adverbial clause of concession you admit something or state that the verb happened under certain circumstances as in this example. Although it is difficult I go to school. Here the main clause is I go to school but the writer is adding a subordinate clause of concession and admitting that he does this despite it being difficult. And finally the last type of adverbial subordinate clause. It gives the condition under which the verb in the main clause occurs. It's called an adverbial clause of condition and it states 
under what condition the verb occurs and it's introduced by the words if, unless, or providing. Here is a sentence where the condition under which the verb occurs is given. If you go to school, you will pass. So here, the condition of passing is going to school. In this lesson, we've introduced a lot of new vocabulary. I hope you've been writing it down. So go over your list soon so that you don't forget it. It's now time for today's task. Add an adverbial clause to the following sentence using each of the eight types that we learned today. Television is fantastic. Well, that's all we have time for. Don't be afraid of the long list of vocabulary that you got today. Just practice it. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.